one, 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 one. Welcome to the 101, 101. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. Hey. If anybody got a question, I give them hey. the proof. Hey. 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 Welcome to the 101, the 101. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. We number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. Hey. If anybody got a question, I give them hey. the proof. Hey. 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 Welcome to 101, a Legacy Lake Sports Network. Hello everybody, Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and this is another edition of One on One as we break down uh, our season previews here in the 804. Last one, you got a chance to see the Richmond women's basketball team, but today you get to see the Richmond men's basketball team and led by Coach Chris Mooney, who's entering his 16th season with the team. Now, along with that, we also have Grant Golden that we brought in and Jacob Gillier. You'll get an opportunity to hear from them as well as we get ready for the 2020. 21 season and this team last year was impressive they went 24 and 7 on the season finishing number two in the a10 and the best thing about this team is they pretty much have everybody coming back they are stacked and a lot of people think that this team will one be a top 25 team and can technically they feel like this team can compete for a national championship. But we'll get to see all of that as the season uh, starts. It will be different because it's 2020, and we don't know how that exactly will unfold, but I cannot wait to see it. Now we'll take you to our previews with Coach Mooney, Jacob Gilliard, and Mr. Grant Golden. This is Darrell Owens. Enjoy the preview. Hello, everybody. Darrell Owens, Legacy Maker Sports Network. And we continue our one-on-one previews. And this time we have Coach Chris Mooney of the Richmond men's basketball team. Coach Mooney, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Really appreciate you having me on. Well, Coach, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. Uh, uh, once again, we always like to thank the people who have been kind to us over our years of you know building this bad boy up. And you, ha- you and your staff have been absolutely phenomenal to us. And so we want to thank you for that right off the bat. Absolutely. Always, uh, always appreciate being able to talk to you guys and uh, appreciate the coverage that we get. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get this day started right with the check in. I want to check in on you and your family, how everything's been going through COVID, just dealing with everything. It's been a tense time in the country. Uh, but how have you and your family been during these tough times? So we've been, we've been doing well, you know, uh, we have two little boys who are 11 and eight. And uh, of course, for a little while there, we were, we were a little bit uh, getting a little cabin fever at home, trying to play in the yard as much as we could. Uh, got a little court there, but um, but now that things are you know m- most of the youth sports are back and in full swing, uh, so we're running guys around uh, to soccer practice and swimming and basketball. So thankfully that that's back. That has given us a lot more normalcy and a lot more you know just things going on and time to be together doing activities. That's awesome. Now, I, I spoke to Coach Rhodes, and he told me that his son and your son are quite the dynamic duo on the AAU court. Uh, so uh, I, I guess I guess he said one week, y'all, were, you were doing scorebook, he was doing scorebook the oh, other yeah. week, just getting it in. So how, how's everything going with the kids and in, uh, uh, in their basketball career so far? It's great. So my son, Danny, uh, plays with Chase Rhodes, who's a really good player, and they, they have a nice team. Uh, Matt Muir is the coach. He was a really good player at BMI. And, does a great job, and so those guys have been those guys have been doing well. So if you if you can get there and keep the score, you're allowed to stay. And there you that's go. Why Mike, <laughs> that's why Mike and I are trying to trying to make sure they uh, they have enough scorekeepers. I, I like I like the strategy. You can never go wrong on that front. You have scorekeepers no for days. <laughs> now, the coach last season, twenty four and seven, second in the A ten, and uh, unfortunately because of COVID, you know, didn't get that opportunity to play out and see what this team could have done in the Atlantic 10 tournament and more likely going on to the uh, NCAA tournament. You know, uh, when, when we first started uh, covering the team, I remember in a press conference you saying, like, you know, we're young, we're, we're, you know, but you saw the potential and what this team can bring. And last year you got to see it. Uh, just give us a recap of last year um, and, and, and your thoughts on last season in general. Well, you know, it was it was a, a great season. You know, we had a we had a great start to the season, great finish to the season, and, and the whole the whole year was good. It's it's a really it's a really fun and exciting team to coach. One, they're extremely talented, but also 
uh, we have older guys who continue to be motivated. You know, they're not, uh, they haven't gotten older guys who, they, they seek more responsibility rather than want more praise or gear or whatever it is. You know, they, they really, they're still very motivated uh, and it's, it's a great team to be around. And I thought last season we played, we played exceptionally well. It was very exciting. We scored a lot. Uh, we improved dramatically on defense, and I'm really glad that we have essentially the whole team back. Yeah, I mean, and it's 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 great. I mean, it's like looking at this team. I said, man, they solid seniors. I mean, I mean, all around, it's just you know Grant and and Jacob and and Kay. I mean, it just it feels really good heading into this season. So I cannot wait. Hopefully, we get to see uh, y'all on the floor uh, or on our front. But I cannot wait to see y'all uh, get on the floor and play this season. Uh, now, uh, how's camp going so far? Uh, you know, how's everything going there? Do you uh, have that person in camp or that player in camp? You're saying, man, I can't wait just to see how they play on the floor this year. Yeah, I think, you know, you're always like that with the freshmen because having seen them in high school, the setting is so different when they get to college. How, how much better the competition is, how much more intense the workouts are. So they're always a little bit stunned early on and then they started to get in the groove. Uh, and we really like our freshman class, which, we could, which could be really good. We have a transfer eligible this year named Connor Crabtree, uh, transferred here from Tulane after a very good freshman year. We're very excited about him. Uh, and then I would say Tyler Burton, who was, had a, a very good freshman year last year, is one of the most improved guys on our team and a guy with probably the highest ceiling of anyone on our team. So uh, can't wait for him to – get more minutes, get more opportunity, and, and have a tremendous season. That's, that's funny you say that. I, you know, speaking to Grant and speaking to Jacob, they feel the same way about uh, Mr. Burden. So I, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to see what, uh, what he's going to bring to the table uh, this season. Now, of course, Coach, um, you are entering year 16. Uh, and and I'm prob- you're probably thinking back then, you're like, man, there's you know, 16 years. You probably, you know, most people, you, you hope for it. Right. You don't know if you'll get to that point, but you're here at this point. Uh, you, you had to go through a lot the last couple of years where, you know, people were trying to push you out of town. But you and the, or, and the program stuck to their guns, and now you're seeing the fruits of that labor. Um, what are your goals heading into 2020-21 season, and, and, and what do you want to see from this team this year? Well, you know, our, our goals, you know, from coach speak are always, you know, to get better every day, to be our best team and all. But I, I really believe we can be one of the best teams in the country. And uh, because we're older and our guys have handled challenges and setbacks and road bumps and those kinds of things, uh, no one in the country will have a perfect season, especially this year. But we feel like we ought to be able to handle those setbacks, whether that's a bad stretch of a game, a bad half, a bad week. Uh, we feel like we should be able to handle those and, and have the resolve and resiliency to bounce back. And I think that, along with our talent and experience, could make us one of the best teams in the country. And that's what we're shooting for. So we're so anxious to get started on November 25th. Uh, and then from there, just try to play great basketball for the next four or five months and hopefully uh, put ourselves in great position every step along the way. Well, Coach, I, I'm excited to see, uh, like I said earlier, just excited to see y'all uh, play this season. Big matchup against Kentucky. That's, that's, we're, we're hoping that still will happen with everything that's been going on. And that, that, that could be a doozy within itself. More likely it's going to be a top 25 matchup. It's just, it's just greatness that we could see coming this season. Coach, I truly appreciate you coming on. I hope everything is going well once again, like I said, with your family and friends. I'm Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. This is Coach Chris Mooney of the Richmond Spiders men's basketball team. Coach, good luck this season. Darrell, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Hope to see you soon. No problem. Until next time, everybody, that's Coach Chris Mooney. This is Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and this has been One on One. Everybody, Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and we are here for another one-on-one and today we are doing our richmond spiders men's basketball preview for the 2020 2021 season and with me today i have the man in the middle the man the myth and the legend himself mr grant golden grant how you doing today brother i'm doing good doing good how are you doing man i can't complain man just taking it one day at a time 
Yep, that's all it is right now, <laughs> I would say. Right. So before we get this thing rocking and rolling and, and really get going, we got to do what we like to call the check-in. You know, just checking in on you, see how you've been handling things during COVID, just trying to, you know, navigate through this crazy thing that we like to call the pandemic. How have you and your family been through in these tough times? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's been crazy, as it has been for everybody. Um, you know, with us going home and both my parents being high risk, uh, our household was on our P's and Q's in terms of, you know, we were really staying in and trying to stay safe and, uh, you know, leaving the house uh, the least amount possible. Um, so we were we were doing uh, doing everything we could to try and stay healthy while we were home. Um, luckily, um, you know, a couple people back home, uh, coaches, high school coaches, they sort of got some access to some gyms that me and my brother were able to get into by ourselves. Um, so we were lucky on that end. Um, but honestly, um, it was kind of nice in the sense that I hadn't been home that long since I was probably a sophomore or freshman in high school. Um, so being able to be home with my, my mom and my brother um, for that long was really nice. And we just tried to make the most of it and enjoy our time together. I think that's probably one thing a lot of people will say that they probably have enjoyed is that family time. I, I, I think I was like a two month period where I was just with the family. So it was always nice to just sit back and just spend that time with my family and my kids. It was, it was really nice. Now I'm ready for them to go back to school. <laughs> understandable. <laughs> understandable. <laughs> now, before we get into this season, let's talk a little bit about last year. 24 and seven, second in the A-10. Uh, at, one, at the end of the season, you guys were the number two ranked mid-major uh, at the end of the season. I mean, I know that's got to be quite the accomplishment. We've been uh, here at Legacy. We've been uh, had the opportunity to pretty much see you from the beginning up until now. Uh, and, you know, uh, can you just give us a recap of last season and what it meant to you? Yeah, uh, obviously we accomplished so many things last year um, and had such a great year. I think – what really meant the most out of all of it is just the two years and how, how disappointing those two years before that were. Um, obviously, having a bunch of guys leave that we were expecting to play a lot, um, Nick Shirag getting hurt, um, Blake having to sit out, you know, all of these different things that sort of didn't really go our way. Um, you know, for all of us to sort of stay, stick the course and, and, and know what we were capable of if we all stayed and did what we were supposed to do to see that come to light and come together for us was really special. And like you said, we com accomplished a lot of things and it's some, a season that I'll forever be grateful for. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that we were able to have it. Obviously it didn't end like the way we wanted, but we're excited for this year and we're looking forward to sort of, you know, finishing up what we, what we started last year and hopefully we'll get an opportunity here. Well, you did have that opportunity to kind of just surprise a lot of people last year. We, I will be honest with you, you know, we saw the talent. We knew it was there. It was just like, when is it coming out? And last year we got to see it in full front. So, you know, congratulations on a great season last year. Now, as you know, uh, camps have probably been, you know, raveling and rolling. Y'all have been rocking at camp. Tell me how camp is going so far. Uh, it's been great, um, obviously. So we came back uh, July 15th, I believe. Um, and things were slow at first, you know, we had to take the right precautions with the school and because of COVID and everything, there were a lot of regulations and things that we had to go through. So at first it was very slow. We were just outside working out, running, conditioning. Um, and then we gradually were able to build up to on the court workouts individual. Um, and then every week we were able to add a couple people to each workout. Um, so it started off slow, but now we're finally at the point where we're having full team workouts um, group workouts, all that good stuff. So it's been great. Um, everybody looks really good. Um, it's just uh, honestly exciting to be back on the court with the guys. Um, it, like quarantine was so long and we didn't really know when we were coming, coming back. So to finally be back and be on the floor again with the guys is just really exciting. Now, during this time, you know, obviously, you know, getting those new teammates, you know, uh, re reacquainting yourself with uh, teammates you've already had. Tell us, uh, is there anybody that you see that you're kind of excited to see play this year? Maybe not, you know, oh, man, you know, maybe in some people's eyes, not the biggest name, or maybe somebody that we already know. But is that that one person you like, man, I cannot wait to see what they look like on the floor this year? Yeah, uh, I think that's an easy answer for me. I think it's Tyler Burton. Um, I think he's an absolute stud. I know Coach Mooney says it all the time, like, 
he thinks he has the chance to be one of the best players to ever come through Richmond. And I agree. Um, he looks really good. Um, he's just the amount of confidence that he has this year compared to last um, is just totally different. Uh, looks way smoother out there, way more comfortable in the offense every day. Uh, so he looks really good. So I expect for him to get some minutes this year and uh, really help us in a lot of different ways. So now, Grant, before we get off here, once again, we do appreciate you coming on with us. Uh, but I do have to ask you this. This being your last season here at uh, Richmond, I know it's got a special place in your heart. Um, is there uh, any personal goals or, and team goals that you have going into this one that you would hope to get done uh, before you finish your career at Richmond? Uh, yeah. Um, I think just the two biggest for me is – to win the A-10 and go to the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, those are the goals that, you know, we have every year coming to every season. Um, and like I said, to sort of have those two tough years like we did um, and sort of stick the course and be so close to having an opportunity at those two goals last year and uh, everything come to an end there, um, it was really disappointing. So, like I said, we're hoping to have the opportunity this year. We hope that we get a, as close to a full season as possible. And uh, those are the two main goals that I know I want to accomplish and everybody else on our team wants to get to. So, Awesome. Everybody, once again, this is a one-on-one -on, -one on the Legacy Maker Sports Network. Grant Golden, the man in the middle for the Richmond Spiders. Grant, good luck on the season, my friend, and thank you for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. No problem. Hello, everybody. Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network, and we are here uh, with the man they call Jacob Gilliard, one of the best players in the Atlantic 10 here for the Richmond Spiders. As we continue our Richmond Spiders men's basketball preview, Jacob, how you doing today, brother? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Doing phenomenal, man. Uh, you know, uh, we talked a little bit beforehand, crazy times going on in the world. Uh, but before we get started and completely in the interview, of course, on one-on-one, -on -one, we like to start with the check-in. So I want to check in on how you and your family have been doing since COVID started, uh, how have you handled COVID and how you've been able to navigate during these tough times. Yeah, um, obviously things are, things are looking a little better, uh, not as crazy. Uh, when we first got sent home, it was the, the longest I had been home since, uh, since I started college. So I know my mom was getting a little tired of me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely good to have everybody back in the house, um, especially just for me to be there that long. Um, just get to spend quality time with them usually that I don't get to. Uh, that was, that was really special for me. Um, but getting back in the swing of things, uh, we're back in school now, uh, trying to handle ourselves, uh, appropriately. Obviously we have restrictions and, and rules and all that. Uh, but you know, we're trying to make the best of it for sure. Yeah. Whoever would have thought that this would be uh, going down. <laughs> it's definitely been an adjustment I think for all of us. And so, uh, like I said, um, we just we all we can do is cross our fingers and hope for the best and hope for a uh, a, a full college basketball. Yeah, most definitely. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about last year. Last year, of course, uh, the Spider Team. I know you guys knew how good you were, and a lot of people probably were surprised to see a Richmond Spiders team come out there and go twenty four for twenty four and seven and finish second in the Atlantic Ten. A lot of people didn't have you, uh, you know, you guys there but uh give us a recap of last season and obviously you didn't get a chance to finish because because of this wonderful thing we got going on called COVID uh and you know I, I know it had to be tough not being able to go to the tournament but just recap last year for you and how you felt during your junior season um you know I feel like as a as a point guard the job is to win games um so my first two years I, I felt like I I don't know like there was uh I guess there was like a Somebody in the back of my head talking to me, like, what more can you do? What more can you do? How can you win more games? Um, but I think with, uh, with maturity and experience, we just got better as a team. Obviously, adding Blake really helped us. Um, getting deeper on the bench really helped us. Getting Nick back really helped us. Um, so it was an exciting season. Obviously, the results, the results showed. You know, I think we were a really good team um, and a team that was starting to gel even, even more towards the end of the season. So that's what we were getting excited for. But, um, you know. Uh, things happen. I think that's what's going to truly help us this year, uh, the, the hunger to get to the tournament. I think that's, that's uh, one of the main reasons we're, we're here playing college basketball. You know, that's where we want to get to. Um, so with not experiencing that, I think it's just going to drive us and, and make us a better team. Well, very excited. I mean, you got a, a solid uh, group of, of juniors and seniors coming back, man. I mean, you guys have been playing together for a while. 
And I feel like you just you just tipping the iceberg. So good things, uh, hopefully to come this season. Now, how you're back at you're back at school. Camp is starting. You know, you're getting rolling in camp. Tell us how camp is going so far. How how <laughs> Coach Mooney, Mooney treating you during camp? Uh, he's good. He's good. Um, you know, um, this summer, uh, kind of just making sure we got back into the flow of things. Um, I think they took the precaution that that nobody or that everybody wasn't doing anything when we were home. <laughs> uh, luckily, <laughs> luckily, a couple of us were able to keep them. But uh, I think they came back with the mindset uh, that we're going to start fresh and that, that everybody had, had taken a lot of time off. So we started a little slow. Um, but I think with such a veteran group, I think he knows what we can, what we can be capable of. And I think he knows that, that we're a veteran group. You know, we're not going to come around here messing around and stuff like that. So he, he, treats, us, uh, he treats us like, uh, like vets, I guess. That, that I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Coach Mooney is excited. I remember uh, our first season covering the team, and I remember um, those growing pains. I just remember, you know, you could tell he had the confidence in the group that it was coming. Uh, you know, obviously, y'all had went through losing some players, and still were able to persevere. And you are where you are right now. Um, but now, let me ask you this: uh, you, you got camp going. Is there one guy that you just like, man, I cannot wait to see this guy on the floor this season? Uh, just, you know, maybe the growth, uh, maybe just just the way you've seen in camp. Is there one person you just like, man, I can't wait to see him out on the floor? Uh, I mean, it's it's so many guys. I mean, probably because we haven't played in so long. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, it's like I want to tell you about Crabtree or Burton or Nate or the mm -hmm. freshman. You know, there, there's just so many people, and I feel like our – our core guys, like I feel like everybody's getting better. You know what I mean? Um, but I guess if I had to pinpoint somebody, um, I think Nathan Kale has, has took the next step defensively. Uh, he must have been watching my tape or something. <laughs> but, <laughs> the but, Jacob uh, Gilliard tape of success, yeah, huh? <laughs> he, he must have been in, in that bag of tricks. But, no, he, he's doing really well. Um, he's in a lot of passing lanes. Obviously, you, he's just physically gifted, uh, six seven, long, athletic has all the tools to be one of the best defenders in not just our conference, but the country, you know what I mean? Um, so I think it's starting to click for him finally there. Um, and then obviously he's just determined. I think he came, came back with a mindset that, that he wants to be really good this year. He wants to help out even more. And um, I'm excited to see him play. Yeah, I mean, and K.O. is definitely growing. And uh, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait to see that. I guess some people said untapped potential. I feel like he can really grow this year. Can't wait right. to see uh, what K.O. has in store for us. Now, of course, Jacob, with this being your senior year, man, you've had a phenomenal career at Richmond. And I know we talked earlier just – being able to see you grow from freshman year. I was there when you hit the buzzer beater against JMU. Uh, I, I remember sitting in my uh, chair like, whoa, that's amazing. And from that point on, you've done nothing, and you and your team have done nothing but thrilled. Um, you know, and you've been a top scorer in the conference for the last couple of years, man. I'm pretty sure you're thinking like, man, what else can I do this senior season? What, what goals do you have coming into this season, uh, personal and team? Um, I'll start with the team first. Uh, that's, that's the most important thing. Obviously, like I said, uh, the reason you play college basketball has to be to, to go to the tournament to win games. So that's that's our number one goal. Um, and then to see how much attention and, and how how good Dayton was last year, just right. to see all the hype around him and everything that comes with it. It was just exciting uh, because maybe, maybe we're not the third best team in the nation or whatever they finished at, but right. just to see how good they were and, and everything that came with it was, was really exciting for me because I think we could be a team of that sense that that's a ranked team that does really well, uh, just runs through the conference and stuff like that. Um, you know, obviously I want to play in the, the conference tournament <laughs> and, uh, and win it. I think that'll be, that'll be special for us. But, um, you know, just, just being the leader that I am is, is my, my big personal goal. Um, being a point guard, I, I want to, you know, I want to make everybody better. Uh, yeah. I want to see us be the best team that we can be. And I want to, I want to know that next year they're going to be in good hands because, because I've been a good enough leader. Um, but goal wise, I, I want to be the player of the year this year. Uh, that, that's kind of the, the goal I've set for myself. I want right. to be the player of the year again. Um, those are my two, those are my two main goals, but you know, none of that comes without, without the team aspect. I, as I've seen, I felt like my sophomore year, I had a, I had a really good year, um, but we weren't winning many games. Um, so I think, I think when it comes first and, and that everything else will carry itself. Awesome. And before we before we leave, leave my friend. Is there a message that you have for Spider Nation? One, we're excited to play for you guys this year. Uh, even if you guys can't watch, we hope you're supporting. Two, make sure y'all go vote. It's, it's one of the biggest things we can do in the world right now. 
Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. All right, everybody. This has been the Richmond Spiders preview here on One on One. I'm Darrell Lawrence. Of course, thanks to Coach Mooney, uh, Grant Golden, and of course, my man, Jacob Gilliard. Jacob, thank you once again, my friend. Appreciate you having me. All righty. That's it, everybody. Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. Until next time. One, 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 one. Welcome to the one on one, one on one. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one. I get the truth, truth, then I give them the scoop. If anybody got a question, I give them the proof. Welcome to the one on one, one on one. When it comes to ratings, man, we number one.